good. Okay, this side of the room. Ready? Everybody, same thing. Okay, the more open your mouth is, I hate to say it, the more air you're going to get in. Also, the more open your mouth is, the more it's like what organ takes the air in here, what is it, your wind pipe, which, what, how is the wind pipe shaped? Round, right, so don't go like this. Okay. Open your mouth, take the air in. Ready? Go. Okay, now, everybody, exhale. We're going to take a finger breath and we're going to play the same chord, okay? Ready? Finger breath and a wind, sorry, before you do it, the air that you use, that you take in, is the air you're going to put in, okay? Ready? Empty out. Okay. Sit up. Here we go. Play the chord. Thank you. 
All the way through. Oh, straight through. Okay. Yeah, keep reading. Can you try that once? One, two, three. <laughs> Question, answer, or antecedent consequent, right? Everybody know that? Everybody know that? Question, answer, antecedent consequent. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. 
application is. Yeah. Add chosen words, but you can even go. Um, so, in other words, if you're going.
Brazilian composer named Hector Villalobos. It's a very difficult work, flute and cello, called the Jet Whistle. And this is a piece that uh, Jessica Myers and Christina Shea have just begun working on for next year's competition for Lincoln Center. And it's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard. This is why they call it the Jet Whistle. Do you know why they call it the Jet Whistle? Yeah, do you know how to make that sound? I'm not. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Do you have, do you have a private teacher, right? Yeah. Great. Okay, Jet Whistle is produced by covering the armature. This is the armature plate on the head joint that I just scratched. Um, and you cover your, um, you cover the lip plate with your mouth. And you go like this.
but it doesn't always have to be the same, and it should respond to what's happening in the cello. So if she's going, play from the beginning, actually. And then, and, and play with me also. Um, and you'll see what I mean. So sometimes it can be faster, sometimes it can be a little more dissonant, you know. Play around with it, because it's really, this sort of, this, this whole movement is sort of like, I don't know, I, I, was, I would imagine somebody who's maybe had a little bit too much drink can't walk very well, you know, because you've got all this, you know,
Um, breathe, use your full lung capacity, sit up straight, use really good posture, and really good practice. And practice that actually, because you can't, you can't all of a sudden, now that I'm playing a concert, you know, I, I'm not gonna, I can't sit up right now. Okay, so, love, let's start there. <laughs> sing, it, sing it out loud <laughs> and play. And really, the other thing is like, sing and play, but like, don't just sing and play, la, la. You know, listen to what you're doing. Listen, feel the vibration, you know, from your instrument, and make sure you don't hear as many of those beats. You know what those beats are? Those, those bad beats that tell you that something's not in tune, okay? Let's, let's do that. Sharp minor, sing it out loud and play. La, Do one more time and listen. Actually, try to match the sound that's coming out of your instrument. Okay, really, really hear it. Okay. Stuff. And plus, you'll also you'll have a more centered sound. Your instrument will vibrate more the way it's it's supposed to vibrate. You know, sometimes you play certain notes, they sound thin because they're out of tune. You find that pitch center and, and you vibrate. It's much. It's just much better. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Okay, let's try big notes at the beginning.
Together, you're not actually phrasing together. Beethoven had an unbelievable imagination, you know, and and the, the way he spins phrases and, and also the use of sforzando. When he writes sforzando, he really needs sforzando. Of course, the sforzando really needs to be in tune. <laughs> but besides, aside from that, it's really it's young, tall, yeah. It's something that's really really expressive. It's it's a real kind of a, a, just an outpouring of emotion on this, and I don't feel like you have enough of those. Also, this little figure here, um, da da di di da ba ba ya di da ba ba da di da di da da. It feels like right now what it sounds like. Then there's another part, and then when all of that is really, it's like it's like an engine trying to get started. Da da di di da ba ba ya di da ba ba ya di da di da di ba, and then it goes on, and then ya, yeah, then it's kind of sinewy. It comes ya da di da di. So and you and don't be afraid to take that kind of time, especially first violins. You can go. And then there's this incredible chord that happens, and that's sort of like, like some you know you're being followed or something's happening, and you don't know like what the outcome is going to be. It's really charged. It's emotionally charged, and so you need to make room for that in your sound. And if you want to get a soft sound. Which a kind of a soft, scary sound? Where are you going to go with your bow? Where are you going to go? You're not going to keep it dead in the center of the strings between the bridge and the fingerboard, are you? No. Where are you going to go? You know, close to the fingerboard. So, why not explore those areas for color changes in the piece? Okay. Can we try that phrase? Actually, so can we start at A? Is that all right? <laughs> that, 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 that at the end, and there's another one at the end. Can everybody sing that? 
Ready? Go. La, 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 la. Can you play that figure right there and sing High it and play three. it? C sharp. Third bar of A. Where it says P, play it strong. Sing. La, la, la. Okay, that's a lot better. A lot better. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's not, it's, there's, there's no trick, really. It's just like you're finally hearing what you're doing. <laughs> and then it's like, wow, that's magic. No, it's not magic. It's just, it's good. <laughs> okay, let's keep going with that. Actually, let's try, why don't we try singing the phrase, all of us together, while we play it, okay? Good. Let's all take it at A. It's what you have to do at home when you practice, by the way. Okay. Let's take it at A, and it's a forte at A. We have the contrast that Dr. O'Connor is asking us to try to get. Letter A, it's forte. The end of a phrase, let's do it anyway. A. There's a continuation, so it's like one plus two plus a tail. Then a continuation. So I need to feel that. Young tease. Everyone say this with me. Da da di da da ta di da da ta ta di da di da di da ta. Okay. So you need to actually, when you're doing that, what do you need to do with your bow and your sound as you're going up? What do you need to do? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Do what he said. <laughs> okay. One more time from A, and this time we are going to keep going. <laughs> We're missing three second violins. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. No. No, I said they're next. Is what I said. <laughs> Start play play it. Uh, where, where is that thing? Yeah, the third part. Okay, play your chord of A, and then everybody sing the third note that you that you play. The third, the next beat. The third bar of A. Everyone sing hit it. the note. Or hit the note. Play it. Third bar of A. And sing. La, sing okay. La, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at A, okay? And then you're not gonna give a cue after the GP, and you guys are not gonna play, but you're gonna sing the note that you have to play. Okay? Let's try that. Letter A. Don't sing it now and again. One more time, same thing. Hey, play it and then sing it. Okay, now we're gonna play that. Bumping, 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 bumping
Can we start there and can you actually sing your, I know you can sing your pitches. Can, can you guys sing, sing your pitches instead of playing them once? And actually what I want to feel is, what is, what is the direction of the line there? Are you guys going yumpy, bumpy, 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 bumpy? Or is it yumpy, bumpy, 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 Which one is it? Second one. Second one? Can I hear in that? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, and I, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I agree with you. Okay, so can, can we actually sing once right there? 52. Thank you. you know. Everyone play your extra octaves and make just hit it so that everyone gets it. You all know what everybody has. A straight what? Straight down. What? It's actually diminished that, but it's eight notes. Yeah, eight notes, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, yes, thank you. Okay, yes, yeah, so can we all sing those with, with the correct with the correct stuff, okay, with all that, the energy between the words. I was saying in my in the first class of today, if I were to say, hi, how are you, you'd think I was a moron. You know, you'd be like, what's wrong with her? How come she can't speak a sentence, you know, right? So, you know, hi, how are you? Right? Yum, bum, bum. There's stuff that's connecting the hi, the how, the heart, the are, and the you. Right? Hi, how are you? So, yum, bing, bum, bing, bum, bing. And even though the notes are short, a short note is just a cut up long note. It has the same direction, right? Yum, bing, bum, bing, bum, bing, bum, bing, bum, bing, bum, bing, bum, bing, bum. Can we all say that together? One. And with your arm, we'll everybody start here and go like that. Okay? So you can feel the direction in your arm. You don't have to get the pitches, just the. Just, no, yeah, no yeah, pitches. All things are just really get and lift your arm, left arm, everybody <coughs> with whoever can use it. Lift up, let it go. Again, ready? Really seriously. One, two, what? Ready? One, two, go. And then this, yeah. So you're part of that moving train that goes, even though you only have a fragment of it, you have to know when you have a fragment of something, and when you're part of something or when you have a solo, you have to make sure that you're leading so the next person isn't left holding all the groceries, okay? You want to you like pass it along very nicely, okay? Now can we play that, wherever that bar is? 52. <laughs> Let's just hear the eighth notes, the long notes. Okay. Seconds, no plates. But this is where you have to be right on time because you will help them if you're on time over there. Start on the 52 cellos, bases, violas, and firsts. Okay, that's better. I heard more in the middle that time. One more time. Uh, don't rush. Start together. Those two things will make it like so perfect. You won't believe it.
so that actually you practice what you're going to do when you play a concert. You should always practice the way you're going to play a concert, okay? I mean, you need to do really careful detail work, but while you're doing detail work, don't, like if you're working on pitch, don't forget about making music, and if you're working on making music, don't forget about pitch. It goes hand, and rhythm, don't, I mean, it all goes hand in hand. Always, when you're focusing on one thing, don't forget about the other things, okay? Now, this thing, yum, ba ba beep bum ba ba beep bum how does, which way does that go? Does it go yum? Right. So maybe second one. So what you need to do, right, is what? Yum. Then start the next one slightly less. Yup. Dot. Dot. Yup. Dot. So don't start at the same. Don't start with the same dynamic on the beginning of it as you want it at the end. But don't do less. Yum. Deep. Dot. Deep. Bop. Deep. Dot. Deep. Dot. Can we do that right there and keep going? Three before the first ending. And if you don't have a first ending, then it's the last three bars before the repeat sign. And we keep going. And just so that you know, Doctor, we only have like a minute left. I know, yeah. Okay. One of the wonderful things that was going on upstairs was uh, that Dr. Solomon was talking to the kids about doing a lot of singing while you're playing. If not real singing, imaginative singing. Uh, um, and ha actually had many of the players, string players, singing as they were playing. And as you know, being a singer myself when I have a voice, uh, it's a fundamental skill for all musicians to be able to hear and then sing or play whatever that means to you. And George Crumb, um, I mentioned him a little bit yesterday, and we have never really listened to George Crumb in here, what some of our more advanced students have, um, combined some real interesting techniques using a singing voice with players. I don't know if you have it. Yeah, yet. actually, there's a piece that he wrote in the, I think, 70s, right? Voice of the Will? Yeah. Yeah, and um, it's done, for, it's for three masked players. That's a fun word to say, mask. Um, feels good. <laughs> All those SKs and EDs. Um, and what you do is you wear a mask and, and there's blue lighting and you're all amplified. It's, it's actually, it takes you, I wish I had bought it because it's, George Crumb scores are the most beautiful scores on the planet. I mean, they're gorgeous. He, and he inks them all by hand. Um, and, and some like 11 echoes of autumn, the, the music goes in actual circles. And then you have to figure out how, to, how this whole thing goes together. Also, he doesn't deal with contemporary notation, which, which we all like to read, our standard notation. 
he, he does things spatially on the page so you know also when things are happening. So they, you'll see a little thing over here and then it'll be connected then something else, another event will happen here and something else will happen there. There's always a groove going on. Anyway, Voice of the Will was written around the time when Greenpeace was um, uh, going into effect. They just started that Save the Whales Foundation uh, campaign and all this other stuff. And what, what happens in, in Voice of the Whale is that um, it starts with the, basically the um, song for the beginning of time. And it starts with the opening flute solo and it starts like this. <clears throat> Imagine a microphone and a mask with blue light. That would be really good stretcher. <laughs> electric flute and then underneath it says voice and I'm singing the pitches are writes a lot of flutter tongue stuff. Those are all extended techniques, what we call, you know, they're extensions of the instrument and they're techniques that we learn. That's why they're called extended Your average flute is yeah. later. Yeah, it's like, you know, although I had a friend in school when I was in, in fourth grade, her name was Lori Everett, and I'll never forget, she could flutter tongue and I was so jealous. So, wow, how are you doing that? She figured it out right Yeah, she, well, she just fooling, you know, you fool her out. You know. Okay, now there's another composer, really famous composer, actually, to flutist. He's written a couple books. His name is Robert Dick. And He's actually coming into town. He's actually living in my apartment as of five o'clock this afternoon for a week. Uh, and um, he's written. Do you know? Do you know him? The other flute. Yeah. He wrote a, p a, a piece for um, for high school, a flute competition, and it's called Lookout. And it starts like this. Again, it's the singing play. I'm going to go through the harmonic partial series by fingering just my regular note on the flute, and then I'm going to sing. But also, I'm going to go. That's just basic harmonics that you get out of trumpet. A any instrument has an overtone series, right? If you if you finger a low note and you overblow, right? Exactly. Like you know, the string, you really press down the string. Exactly. But you know what I'm talking about? Harmonics and stuff. Okay. Any any questions about that so far? Anything? Questions about what we've talked about? <coughs> okay. Um,
that's fabulous. <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> these are kind of fun, actually. What, the, all that stuff. Okay, first thing, like I told you, right, there's that thing, singing and flowing through the, through the, through the partial series. Then there was, so I sing a note, and I just keep blowing my air, but then I move my fingers. Isn't that cool? And then I do the reverse. I play the low D. Okay? And what you can do. No, but you can do all kinds of tapping and stuff on a string instrument. Oh, yeah, yeah, like percussion. Yeah, and also colinho and, and, and um, with a bow and, and all kinds of weird knocking. There's a piece, actually, you should check this out. Yeah, I, I wish we had one. Um, yeah? No, we know that, no. Okay. But, so, okay so, listen, take what to listen to. I'd like to give you two things, okay? Can you remember this? There's a piece by, get a pen. <laughs> There's a piece by Don Martino called From the Other Side. And oh, I know that. It's the third, I, we did a recording of it actually, it's out, yeah, it's my group. And, um, What's the name of your group? New Millennium Ensemble. We're oh, a contemporary okay. music group and, and we need to work on that stuff. Okay, it's called um, Don Martino from the Other Side. And it, the third movement is called, this is the third movement, it's called Dance of the Reluctant Flamapoo. And everybody know what a flam is? Flam is a drum stroke, right? Yeah? Well, a flamapoo, he thinks it's kind of a strange bird, okay? And what he does is, um, <clears throat> he uses the cello like all over, like don't do that, don't do that, that kind of thing. Yeah, he's a It's really fun. No, but you should check it out. Also, there's another piece by Jacob. Is it Jacob Jackman Valentine? Is that Valentine? Yeah, that's a really cool. That's for solo bass. And also another piece, Bang on a Can. Do you ever get listen to those guys? The Bang on a Can industry recordings. They're the downtown group. There's a piece um, by, that Robert Black plays. He's a phenomenal bassist. I played with him in a couple of things with Bang on a Can All Stars, and we just did all this Brian Eno transcription stuff. But he um, he has a piece called Failing, and actually in the piece Failing, <laughs> desperately try not to fail is your mission. And the objective is while you're doing this whole thing, you have to speak and make up a cadenza. It's it's really it's unbelievable. It's just it's just all of it. You should check it out. Family. Okay. It's on a bang on a camera. Okay. Then there's a couple of other really cool sounds. Besides, we can do. You probably heard these. Those are multiphonics. Okay. Every every instrument. You think wind players can only play one note? Well, actually, <laughs> wrong. We can play more than one, but they just don't sound as good as they do. Yeah, French horn. Yeah. Right. But with different fingerings, different combinations. There are special books that have these stuff in, but this is in them. Natalie, would you close the door? Um, the other thing that I use in there, which is really cool, is key clicks. And um, I'll... You're resonating with your... Absolutely, because if I don't do that, they're not in tune. La, 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 la. Flat, flat. Sharp, er. Really sharp. Okay. Now, there's another thing that's really cool that I didn't do yet, but there's this. Okay. And what that is is that's a what they call a tongue stop. You blow air into the instrument and then you it's just like a slap tongue clarinet. This is our favorite. Right. What? This is our favorite thing. Right? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. So what I'm doing, everybody go like say wheat. Say the word wheat. Okay, now go. That's what I'm doing into the instrument. Okay, that's another one. Now, um, oh, there's one other one too. This is a pizzicato. I can actually, we can do pizzicato. Somebody close your eyes, don't look, because it looks really stupid. Okay. Okay, that's like a pit, sound like a string pit. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, all these things are possible on instruments. You just have to figure out a way to notate them. There is, and there, the thing is, with only a few things are really, really standard. Like, there's this notation for key click, right? Probably, that's it, just a little, for flute, like, it's that. And then that's standard notation for harmonic, right? Flutter tongue, standard notation is that, right? Or, and then, or I'll, I'll say FTC or something like that. Those are standard. But the other stuff, and pits, 
just like you write in pits. That's just what you write. You write in pits. It's pits. Uh, pits is only work in the low register. All these things, these tongue stops, you can write TS, you know, and then, but if you're going to use any kind of extended techniques in your piece, what you need to do is you need to make a key at the beginning of, on the first page, like where you have information like, in this piece, uh, these sounds are being, you know, used. Um, this means that. This means do that. This means do that. This means do that. So you have a little key, and then, you know what I'm saying? So it's like a little place, like a, it's like an index where I can, I can look up things, and I know what you want me to do. Dictionary of your language. Exactly. You know, and check out some other pieces. Check out Crumb. Check out Brian Fernieho. <laughs> that's that. That's the. This is the opening of Cassandra's Dream Song. It's an outrageous score. There's more black on it than white, actually. It goes like this. That's what this looks like. Looks like this. That's what that looks like. So, alto flute. Can I talk about this really quick so yeah. you know what it's? Okay, this is a beautiful instrument. Which one's going to be um, lower? Why? Lower, longer, right? Okay. Shorter. It's amazing this the alto flute is a little lower. Yeah, although I'm telling you, it's always in my bag. I'm, <laughs> Always bringing it to rare so <laughs> it's um in contemporary music now I mean like the first person to really orchestral was probably Holst right in the planets the the fourth the dee da 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 that whole um what is it it's Saturn or the mystery one the bringer of I think it's bringer of fire Jupiter or, it's a later one it's later on in the <laughs> piece it's a, it's a really romantic one actually but the sound is slower do you know how much lower it's going to be do you know what the alto flute what key of the alto flute is in Right. So if I were to do the crumb on that, you heard the crumb on this, right? You can do anything on any instrument if you want. Or use the same fingering. It's that much lower. It's four notes lower. Okay? So it's a perfect fourth lower than the C flute. Okay? So and here's what it sounds like. It's got a really beautiful sultry low register. You know? But I'll tell you, it's a whole, my, my flute, my C flute goes down to here. And this is a whole lot more plumbing to only get this many more notes. That's it. One, two, three, four. That's this whole thing. It gives me four more notes on the bottom. That's it. Okay, and there's a bass flute which gets me down to here. Okay, the piccolo gets me up to like there, you know. Um, so it's a lot of plumbing for, for, for only a little bit. <coughs> piccolo you've seen, obviously. This one's wood. You should all be able to demonstrate like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's that's the instrument. Those are some extended techniques. Does anybody have any questions about stuff that I, I mean, besides the fact that it's weird? <laughs> it's kind of fun, you know. Well, you know, but, well, I'll be perfectly truthful with you. We haven't gone there yet. Yeah. As composers. Good. Composers. Uh, they're still getting the basic stuff together. Great. Um, let's do some stuff. Let's do some stuff. Yeah. Ross, do you have any who else brought a piece to me? Annie? Great. Let's I haven't let's seen get. your piece. Did you write a food part? Let's get it. Do I have a food part? That's a, yeah. All right. Let's, let's do it. I'm gonna, all right. I'm gonna just all read a whole bunch of this stuff. That's really great. You know, the challenge. Do you need two parts, though? <laughs> uh, is it for two instruments? Yeah. Well. Piano. Let's do one on piano, one on flute. So, okay. Yes. Yes. No, 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 no. Oh. Can, you, can you play? Can you, um, can you play one of them? Who can play? Can you play? Probably. Beautiful. All right, let's do it. Let's, let's get right to it. I'll play the top. Can I play the top right up there? Okay, you play the left. No, I think we could. How many pieces do we have here that are sort of ready to go? Ross, Annie, and Amy, four. Play what? That's the That's the Okay. Here we go. Start reading. Okay. Okay. Start it. You want to hear it on the flute? You want to hear it on the flute? 
Yeah, but there's, you got an um, F. We have an F there. <laughs> the only place I really hear the B flat is there. I agree with you. Yeah, you know, because it's really, it, it's really going. Okay, hey, Ross, so, bring so your piece up. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Oh, yeah. We should all have our pieces read, so. Well, the second one is always better. <laughs> now we've got. Oh, I've got a part. Uh, let's do. Got a clarinet. Let's look at this one first. Sure, Ross, I want to learn this one. We want to play a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes, what does this mean? <laughs> what does your title mean? Uh, the light has gone out. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I like your font. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Castle. Oh, great. Oh, excellent. Okay. okay. Uh, do we have a card there? Well, we will in a minute. We have clarinet in this one. Oh. The next one. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just play some more. Play. No other pieces. Side beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you look at the score and uh, tell us how we're doing? Yeah. Come over here. Okay. Tell us how the composer. Did. I'm going to sit. Is that if that's okay? Well, all right. Yeah. Well, no sitting here, Mr. Rick. So I don't have to transpose this. Uh, apparently not. Arrange. <coughs> okay. What's your tempo here? Because you don't have a marking. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
transcribed it from a keyboard piece that he was working on. Right. How did he do? He did great. I had no problem, actually. Um, the, the phrasing makes perfect sense. The breath marks make perfect sense. And actually, um, what I can do, since the notes are short enough, I mean, you can't tell yeah. this, but you, we, can, we can sneak Aaron. straw, I can do it, but the problem with the flute is that because there's no, um, there's no resistance, right. you just blow over an open end, yeah. that we actually, the way we do it is we put um, a chamber of air in here and squeeze it out that way and inhale, but that's what I'm up to now. I can wow. do it continuously in a, in a glass. I have friends who can do it. You know, they just spend their whole summer. Robert, <laughs> my friend Robert can do it. It's amazing. Robert Dick? Yeah, oh. this one piece called Flames Must right. Not Encircle Sides. It's really, it's almost impossible to do on a flute. Yeah, a clarinet and saxophone. Well, the reed instrument is more resistant. Yeah, because you're, you're closing off. Right, right. That's why. So. Uh, one thing that you might, in writing for flute, because there's little resistance, you can take quicker breaths. You know, <coughs> in other words, uh, uh, with a, with a reed instrument or a brass instrument, because there's so much resistance, you need more time to right, take the breath. Right, you can take it in pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's do another one. It's great. Oh. Really, it's very, very different. So this is yeah. really great. Yeah, you're really emphasizing. Yes, it's time. really. What's great about so far what I've seen is everybody writes really differently. I like that. I mean, it's amazing. And of course, it's going to happen that way, but because everybody plays differently, but. It's nice mm. to see in a competition class there are yeah. different things. Yeah. Um, I agree. It's really great. The challenge, obviously, is always to play, to try to make, you know, to Here we it's, hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's got to be, I, as, a, as a performer, I'm very envious of, um, of composers because the, they're, you're not afraid to write something and take a chance, you know, and as a player, it's easier for me to play, but I've always, always admired composers because they, they write down what they feel, and it's it's a tough, it's a really tough thing, and you're very vulnerable and very, uh, you know, your your emotions are on your sleeve, but at the same time, you know, it's 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 really great. It's nice to be able to express yourself that way. Okay, ready? Yeah. What's your tempo here, honey? Yeah. 
Another moderato. Can we slow it down a little because sure. Mr. Rakowski's reading from the uh, C concert page? Okay. Ready? <laughs> so my A flat. Okay, ready. You want right? So it's more tumbly, right? So um, another thing that, that we can, I mean, if you you want it to stay the same tempo, right? But just have more of a tumbling feel. Yeah. Okay. Um, to write when you, I, I like what you've written. Timidly is nice and stronger. Um, I wonder if there are. Um, I know. No, they're great. But I, um, I'm trying to think of what. Uh, Timid is good. Timidly and stronger are good. Um, but now, when you've written legato, do you, when you mean legato, do you mean separate but still tongued or connected without any tongue at all? Sure. So legato, that, that would be like ta ta ti ta ta ta. Say that with me. Ta ta ti ta ta ta. Right. Now the other would be la. Great, and then are all in the same then? Yeah? I want to okay. say thank you very I much to Dr. O'Connor for I want to see this. coming.